Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the episode I Remember Zahra, a show where we talk about Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and the effects of a miscarriage to relate it to the miscarriages that are happening nowadays. I would like to welcome our dear guest here, Fahima Muhammad. She is a life coach. So, salam alaikum, uh, Sister Fahima. Alaikum salam. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about Fatima Zahra alayhi mm-hmm. salam and what she went through from her miscarriages. And slightly, we'll refer it to the miscarriages that happen to women nowadays and how they feel and the effects of it and what they go through. So, Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, eventually after the attack on her door, it took two lives away, the life herself, Fatima, and the life of her martyred, Al-Muhsin. Al-Muhsin, he's the son of Ali and Fatima. He was no more, no more than six months at the time of the attack. He had nothing to do with politics, he had nothing to do with business, and he had nothing to do with machinations, which was the reason of the attack on Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. Al-Muhsin did not even know what was happening and what happened. So, and none of the people had, who had um, a grasp over Ali and Fatima had any, an argument against the Muhsin. Even those who questioned and debated the infallibility of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and Imam Ali fell silence when the infallibility of an unborn martyrdom al-Muhsin was raised. Uh, many people nowadays and many Muslims are now very sadly to say that they debate and say that the Muhsin wasn't present. They neglect his presence and they neglect his, his martyrdom, even though Al Muhsin was there. Mm-hmm. But the whole the whole reason why they neglect that the Muhsin was there is because Fatima Zahra alayhi salam attacking her door was an unjustified thing. So the only way to get out of it is to deny the whole thing, to deny it all. So they denied that the Muhsin was there. But the Muhsin, he was just there to show the infallibility, defend the infallibility, infallibility of Fatima al-Zahra and Imam Ali alayhi salam. Just like how in Karbala today, you see his nephew, Ali ibn al Hussein, Ali al-Azghar, he was also there in the Battle of Karbala. He was inspired from the Muhsin. And the Muhsin alayhi salam, he, from him being just in the womb of Fatima, shows to the whole world the evilness of people, what they did to Fatima. Any lady today, she's in her home and she gets attacked. Okay, you can say, what did she do? What happened? But her being pregnant and attacking her and causing her the miscarriage, the world today would stop against that and say, what does it have to do with a baby? Why? He's a baby. He doesn't know what's happening. You want to kill her. Let her give birth and then attack the house. But you know she's pregnant and you know she was behind the door. So that shows just by the Muhsin being there, he defended Fatima al-Zahra. The infallibility of her and the infallibility of Amir al-Mu'mineen. So back to slightly to Karbala. Uh, Ali al-Azghar did the same thing. Inspires him was al-Muhsin, his uncle. What he did was he also wanted to, to take a wage in the battle of Karbala. So he defended whom? Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, he is one of those unique in his oppressions because he has been present in both of the attacks the attack of Fatima and Al Muhsin and the attack of Abdullah Raleigh. So let's go back to the miscarriages. Um, Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam, it has been documented that the martyrdom of Fatima and the martyrdom of Abdul of Al Muhsin was because of the attack. Some people say no, it's not because of the attack. Fatima died because she cried and wept that her father passed away. That was part of it. But Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam died because of the miscarriage, the causes that affected her, the pain that she had in her. Even that when Imam Ali put her in Al Muhtasal. He was washing her before he buries her. He saw the bruises on her, her body. And then he noticed that there was a rib broken that she didn't even let him be aware of. So there is causes of the death of, death of Fatima alayhi salam. It's not just because she wept and cried on her father. One was a miscarriage. And that is something very big because nowadays when a woman gives a miscarriage, she goes through a lot physically and emotionally. How about if that, what she went through, 
causing her the miscarriage was because of violence, because of her being abused and hit. Now let's refer the miscarriaging, the miscarriage that has happened to Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam to what we see women nowadays when they go through miscarriage, just look at her emotional, her physically, her physical body. Let's talk more about the scientific things or her hormones, what they go through and how she feels. Just for the viewers and for us to understand mm -hmm. and know what Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam went through. Well, in today's psychology and with research that's been done, um, it is quite common to have miscarriages and some of it's known, some of it's not. And it's usually in the first trimester. Um, beyond that, it actually can be even more um, sort of like um, hurtful and harmful for the actual parent mum that's going through it. Mm -hmm. um, as the time is a lot more and is a lot more um, sort of like apprehension that thinking that yes this is going to really happen because they say the first 12 weeks is the most detrimental and you have to be careful yes. and once you pass that then yes you're safe, you're safe. Um, but it is happening a lot and whether or not it's in the first 12 weeks or after of course there's psychological effects of right. course there is and a lot of people actually don't give that much support even in the medical sort of industry after miscarriages mm -hmm. and um, the effects okay might be Physically, they can see to them and, you know, they will be given all the support and medication, whatever they need. But emotionally, but emotionally and mentally, hard. it's very difficult. Right. And it's not just for the mom. You have to also give credit that, you know, the father also goes through right. it too because they don't actually know what to do and what the emotions are and right. how to deal with it. And they actually do have the trauma as well. And it could c cause stress and anxiety, fear of having children again or something that blame yeah. on themselves. Right. You know, so things like that is something that you really need to consider and, you know, people do need to seek support and help for that too because it can affect them later on and it could actually, you know, your body changes anyway mm -hmm. and to go through something because that... Because your body is yes. used to the hormones of pregnancy. Of course. And then at the time of the miscarriage or a stillbirth, it yeah, stops. it does. So that when it stops, it just changes um, just the, the way yeah. she feels, her mood. Um, so all that Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam went course, through. Of course, absolutely. You'd go through that with the, you know, like you said, the scientific and the medical things mm -hmm. that is like, you know, basically inevitable. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you know, not even considering the oppression right. that Fatima to Zahra had to go through, but just talking about today's, you know, sort of situations, just knowing that that was an experience. Yes. It is really, um, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that can give lack of confidence in right. you carrying a child, mm -hmm. uh, depending obviously on the situation. But there's a lot of research that shows that it happens without most people knowing the reasons why. That when it happens, when mm -hmm. you don't know why, exactly. you know, you say it's from God, Allah, Course. whatever Allah wanted. Yeah. But when you know that there was someone there was causing a reason. it, there yes. was a reason. There was a reason. It's much hurts more. more. It's much more hurtful yes. because then you do feel more of the death. It feels also yes. it's your fault because, yeah. you know, I stood, even though Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, Allah wrote, wrote the script for her that Fatima, this is what's going to happen. And, and Rasulullah told her, Fatima, this is your role, yeah. this is what's going to happen. And she knows. But still at the time she feels like I lost my muhsin yes. and I stood behind the door and he was hit, he was squeezed. Yeah, because so she positioned herself in yes. that way. Yes, of course, we're going to obviously put blame on ourselves. And women today that are dealing with miscarriages, um, they're actually quite you know, strong about it. But they're also the fact that people say that don't mention anything before the 12 weeks so that when they actually go through a miscarriage, within that time no it's knows. difficult yes. yeah because it's hard to address for people it to come up to you and tell yeah. you oh, how's your baby and it's not there it's not like, there that's the or even people that are not aware that you're pregnant in the first place and then you're going through that whole experience right. of pregnancy and going through that without people even realizing that you were pregnant in the first place unless it's obviously your close family and you know yes. and most people say don't say anything in the first 12 weeks even when you go to the hospitals they even say that yes. it's not just in the communities you know but um it is something that um but the baby muhsin he wasn't yes. 13 weeks. No, he it was much, much more older. Six months yes. of pregnancy is a lot. Of course. That is a lot of pain. I mean, when you go through a miscarriage. The baby's formed, and yes. And you're like yeah. nine weeks. I mean, the pain is less. Yes. Then you go to a miscarriage or a stillbirth when the baby is big. Of you course. have to give birth to a dead, murdered baby. Exactly. And then Muhsin, alayhi salam, he was murdered. It wasn't that it, it caused a miscarriage like that automatically because Allah wanted and her hormones stopped. It was because she was hit behind the wall and squeezed harder and when Omar 
kicked the door, the door slammed on Fatima's stomach, alayhi salam. So that slam caused her the biggest miscarriage and the squeeze on top of it. So basically, Fatima Tazara alayhi salam went through a murder miscarriage. Yes. But at the same time, when women, they feel the miscarriage, uh, they feel like, I lost everything in my life. Yeah. They go through depression. But when you just go back and remember what Fatima Zahra Zahra went through, I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put those role models for us of to, course. To, to calm us down, to be like, you Absolutely. know what? Fatima went through the pain and she is Fatima. Who am I? Fatima Zahra, she was not 16 weeks pregnant, not three weeks pregnant. Even she was much six more. months. Yes, that's why we call her the role model for yeah. many reasons. Because... Um, <coughs> People go through things, like I said, even in this day and age, thinking that it's only me, but we don't realize that we're actually teaching others around us. Yes. We can be the role models for our sort of challenges that we face. We right. can, you know, talk and speak or give support to people that are nearby us because it is happening quite widely, unfortunately, right. you know, with regards to, you know, miscarriages or any sort of challenge that we have to face in life mm -hmm. so it's the way in which you look at it and how you come come out of it and to understand it to understand that yes there is a grieving process mm -hmm. and we're going to sort of like disassociate ourselves maybe socially or even our relationships might suffer mm -hmm. but if when you have awareness of all of these sort of feelings then you might be able to overcome them a lot quicker and deal with the situation a lot more healthily Yes. Instead of suppressing it and thinking that I shouldn't be feeling like this, or I'm just going to keep it to myself, or I just Especially need to deal. Especially if it's the first pregnancy, yes. that is the worst. It's quite difficult yeah. because you're most likely looking forward to it. You're planning. Even it's if it wasn't planned, you feel like, oh, I can't get kids. Of Something course. happens. Something's of wrong course. with me. So the emotionally you go through is not just because of the hormones it's also the mental yes it thinking. breaks your self-esteem a lot yes. as a woman you know because you you do sort of judge yourself and you question yourself and you question your body and you you question you know what exactly you know can happen in, mm -hmm. and people actually i know personally in with miscarriages is not just even that's happened once or twice it's happened like three four mm -hmm. times so right. it you know with the one person and it's really, really traumatic. But the strength that they can come out of it very is hard. very, very, um, you know, it's it's inspiring. Yes. You know, because the thing is, life does go on and you can and Allah puts everything on us for us to keep growing and evolving and developing. Right. But we need to ve develop our minds and our knowledge as to what, you know, we're going to suffer, what we're going to feel so that we can overcome this. Mm -hmm. That's for normal women who exactly. get have pregnant that. and have the miscarriage. But we always martyr the Mahsan alayhi salam and mourn on him. It's because this is a very a difficult tragedy that Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam had to go through. I Could mean, have been avoided, should have been avoided, yes, shouldn't have happened in the happened. first place. And she is Fatima al Zahra. Yes. The baby is not any mm -hmm. other baby. He's the son of Ali. If he was to be born, he would have been an imam of the zaman. Of course, so yeah. all the mourning that we do it's uh, just like today, if you hear on the mm -hmm. news, a woman, okay, uh, being murdered, someone comes and murders her child and kicks her in her stomach. Of and course. She it's still her miscarriage. shocking It's in today's shocking to news. the world. People yes. will be like, why? Yeah. What happened? What's mm -hmm. the reason? People would stand up there, talk. People on media, it would, be, it would be the biggest story ever. Like, it would be something that shocks the world. So, how about if it was Mehsin? the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al Zahra and he is not a normal baby to be murdered at the age where he doesn't even know what's happening. They came in for what? For for money, for something to do with politics, business, khilafa, caliphate, whatever it was. What does the Mihsin have to do? So when people that are not Muslim come in to find out about Fatima al Zahra alayhi yes. salam and they be like, okay, what's the story of Fatima? What's the story of Ali? Why did they come to the door? What was it attacking about? Okay, caliphate. Yes, business. Yes, money. Okay, what else? But then Looking they find out that more, Fatima it was yeah. pregnant. They would be like, oh. If you say abusing a woman, hitting a woman, they would be like, okay, he did that. But when they hear about the so baby, pregnant, yeah. they would be like, okay, just because he killed her baby, then that is something big. I'm converting to Islam. Or Islam has something to do with Fatima to Zahra. It has something to do with humanity. Of course. So, and um, also we need to also learn that um, Fatima to Zahra, through all the imp oppressions that you've just, you know, reminded us, that it didn't stop her from using her voice. It didn't mm -hmm. stop her from, you know, sort of claiming what Islam needs to be, she you know, stood up she stood and up. She and women today need to do the same. Yes. We need to 
show and be heard, our voices. Point, yes. Absolutely. We should not point. really let anything or anyone hold us back from the justice mm -hmm. and from the rights that we have. Right. And this is what we need to learn and take away from. Yeah, that was a very nice point what you said about having her voice because Fatima Zahra السلام, when she had the miscarriage and when she her rib was broken uh, she didn't close the doors and be like that's the end of the world exactly. she went out she gave a speech about Fadak which is another topic that's course, another that topic, was taken yes. away from her mm -hmm. then she uh, she used to do chores at home she used to still cook for Imam Ali and Hassan and Hussein and do all the chores for a couple days until she passed away that even Imam Ali did not know that her rib was broken. Like, she didn't show him what she went through. It wasn't just a miscarriage, that was one. And on top of that, her rib was broken. She didn't show it to the family. Nowadays, us as human, we can't do that. We have to take yes, it out. We have, we have to. to show it. We have to cry, weep, um, scream. I lost the baby. Complain. Oh my God, yeah. what, was go what yeah. am I going through? Take mm -hmm. care of me. I'm depressed. Take me out. Do you know the depression that a woman goes through after a miscarriage? It's very hard. She, she wants to go out, but at the same time, she's tired. When she's out, she feels like, okay, I still not ha I'm not out of this depression. She remembers back what's happening. Even though if she had like uh, four children, I've seen women who have like more than one child. Yes. And she has a miscarriage. It's like, alhamdulillah, you have kids. But just the physical thinking, the mental thinking about I lost something is very hard. It is, and we need to not make ourselves be defined by anything that we go through. That is true. But look at how we use, what I'm saying, use it, yeah. and then we compare it to Fatima to Zahra. Yeah. She used the she, she still daily gave, life yeah. was the same. She, she still, still, yeah, she still gave the meaning and the purpose of what we need to stand for. And that was that is why she's a role model. Exactly. Of Nisa al Alameen. Min al Awadin wal Akhirin. She's the leader of the women of all times. Of all times. Not just yes. Alamuha, not just the, the, the people around her in her lifetime. She's a role model for us and she's the role model for the generations after us. We can always refer to Fatima, what happened to Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam and what she went okay. through. So that was a very nice point of view which you pointed it out. Thank you. Let's now move to the on to the one to one segments. Assalamu alaikum sister. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for joining me today in the session and um, you're going to be talking about uh, miscarriage. Mm -hmm. So firstly could you be able to um, give us a little insight of the experience that you had when you first heard the news? It was just the most heart-wrenching experience of my life and I just remember when it happened I just sat there and I just stared into space. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I um, I was about seven weeks into my first pregnancy when I started to feel a lot of pain. And the one day I found that I was bleeding very heavily. And my husband took me straight to the doctors. And um, the scan revealed that there was a strong heartbeat, but um, there was a tear in the sack. And basically the doctor came in and told me that there was a chance that I could miscarry my baby. And um, I just carried on as normal. I just told myself, oh, it's only a chance. Everything will be fine. I've done everything right. I've been a good mother. But a few weeks passed and the pain increased and the, and one day the pain was just so much that I ended up in a hospital again and this was when the doctor came in and told me that that my baby had passed away and I don't even remember what he said after that I don't even remember him talking about the options. I just remember, like, just wanting to pass out. 
I don't think if, if my husband wasn't there beside me, I'd just... God, I, I just would have blacked out and not had a clue at what was going on. It's an incredible stress on anyone to be going through something like that. And I just want to learn a little bit more on the feeling that you sort of took with you from this experience. I just blamed myself. <clears throat> from the moment you know that you're pregnant, you just think, I've got this little baby that is my responsibility that I have to protect. I felt like I'd let my child do down. I thought of everything that I'd done and I was just examining everything to find what I'd done wrong. And even in my mind, I felt like my husband blamed me as well, even though he didn't. And I should have just talked to him, but I just shut myself away. So could you explain um the reasons why you would feel that you were actually to blame for this? It's just the fact that I was this baby's mother and this baby had not even been born yet. This baby was in my stomach and I was providing it with everything that it needed until it was born. That was my job to do. So automatically I just thought that it was my fault, even though it wasn't. It was just one of these things that just happens for whatever reason. It was nothing to do with me. There was nothing I could have done differently that would have changed all of this. So what advice would you give somebody who probably recently going through something like this from your learning so far? What advice would you give them to sort of maybe not have those feelings and, and move forward? I definitely just speak, talk as much as possible, even if it takes you a bit of time to open up, but especially, you know, with your husband, because at the end of the day, they've lost their baby too. Mm -hmm. They're hurting as well, and just confiding in that somebody it just takes the weight off your shoulders and it helps you to see past that bubble of grief that you're just engrossed in. So other than communicating with someone close, what other tips would you sort of suggest? I think, you know, one of the most powerful things we can do is just reflection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I think of Fatima Zahra alayha salam. When I think of her losing her baby the way that she did, you know, that was Sayyid Mawson alayhi salam. That was a human being with potential who could have done amazing things. The fact that Sayyid Fatima, she, she didn't say to Allah, she didn't say, why did you let my baby die? Why did you let this happen to me? You know, he could have been this, he could have been that. She just trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She knew that Allah was the best of planners. And despite how awful and how painful the whole thing is, you know, she just carried on because she knew that, she knew it was Qadr and she knew that ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give her something better than what she has lost. That is his promise to us in the Holy Quran. Yes, I mean, everything that you've highlighted is exactly what we need to remind ourselves. And it's easy to say, but when you go through it, it's very difficult to actually take those situations from the past and relate that to our current situation. So could you Give us something a little bit specific as to what you've done in order to bring you to a place of believing like that and thinking like that and and actually practicing something like that.
I guess just I've just been persistent with just making my prayers and my du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I've just seen how those prayers have just changed me and I see the way that so often Allah has saved me from things we say in du'a kameel like how many trips have you saved me from I've started to see those things so clearly now and I look at what he has given me. I look at how the Ahlul Bayt والسلام, have just been there for me and they've just always answered whatever need I've had and I just think to myself, you know, how can how can things ever be terrible when I have these things in my life? When I know that I have them at my back. You've highlighted some amazing points and what I can pick up from is the fact that you have given yourself the strength from the strength and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt and Fatima to Zahra in particular. Mm -hmm. And I think that it highlights that we are definitely, you know, in, in a religion that gives us the guidance and that gives us the answers and you can actually overcome adversity mm -hmm. and challenge mm -hmm. and what you're saying to me is that even though it is something that's so tragic but you can actually build strength from it and you can evolve and grow and develop and the fact that you're here sitting sharing your story that is so painful that someone who doesn't have the opportunity or doesn't have that insight already you're actually highlighting to somebody that there is hope mm -hmm. and there's a second chance mm -hmm. and you can actually move forward is there any other feeling that you can actually give us from the teachings of Fatima to Zahra that you know can actually take us to a level that particularly in miscarriage and for you personally that could actually um, if someone was listening right now what would be the one thing that you would actually say to them the thing with the miscarriage of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam is she lost her baby in the most violent of ways yeah. and I myself thank God that I didn't lose my baby in that way because I just don't know how I would have coped. The thing um, Lady Fatima teaches us is that she it's okay to cry, it's okay to grieve and to wail, but the main thing is, is that you stand up against injustice. Her baby was murdered, yet instead of hiding away, she went back out into society, she confronted the killers of her child and she was defiant in their faces. And in a way, you know, I just hope that I can be defiant, even though my story is so different to hers. I just hope that I can just look at life in the face and just say to you, you are worthless. This whole world and what it has to offer me is worthless. Because at the end of the day, I'm not, I don't belong here. I was created for something better and I'm just on a journey here and anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me is a blessing. That is amazing and so is inspirational as to everything that you've said and everything that you've highlighted and I'm sure that everyone that's listening, you know, has just great gained so much sort of like motivation that even from something this tragic that you can actually move forward and you can actually you know have faith and belief and strength to actually carry on mm -hmm. so how do you think that for you personally at this very moment in time especially psychologically um where are you at at this very moment i'll never forget my baby because and that's okay yeah. yeah I'll never forget my baby and 
you know, sometimes I stay, you know, alhamdulillah, I have a family, I have children now, and I'm very happy. Sometimes I will think of that baby that I lost and think, oh, what if, what if? But I just think to myself, you know, maybe Fatima Salam is taking care of that baby for me. And one day, inshallah, through her intercession, I, I can be reunited with that child in Jannah. And, okay. Inshallah. And I think that it brings so much hope to people that are going through the situation to know that, you know, the life still carries on and the pain, it will still be there, but it will be something that you can cope with and you can keep the memory it doesn't need to disappear. There's nothing wrong in still having that memory of that child, but to have it in a healthy way and to actually um, celebrate the fact that you were given that situation in order to build yourself, to continue with your faith and to increase in your Iman. And I think it's, it's so inspirational and it's so, so brave of you. And I really appreciate the fact that you have come here today to have this session and speak about especially something this tormenting and you know it's very difficult to even talk generally mm -hmm. let alone to share this but I know that you have a, a much higher purpose in you sharing your story mm -hmm. so that people are aware of the situation and mm -hmm. how they can learn from it and grow from it mm -hmm. so I just want to thank you so much personally and from the channel that it's an amazing um, session and you've given us so much light, light and, and hope, hope. And inshallah. i wish you all the best and inshallah you take care and hopefully we will speak soon yeah. thank you so much sister. thank you so, so much, much for having um, the session today So welcome back viewers, um, that was very sad breaking and heartbreaking um, to hear a story like this even though uh, when I look at it I feel like she's not the only person out there but it's that people are shy to talk about it and they feel ashamed to talk about it or they don't want to talk about it. I mean when one has a miscarriage she thinks she's the only person but when she hears about other people's stories she just goes like oh wow I'm not the only one yes a lot of women do feel that you know they don't want to speak about it because other people don't understand and they can't relate and mm -hmm. they have to speak to somebody about it that actually been through it mm -hmm. but it's not about that because in every sort of grieving process or any sort of tragedy there is um, the same sort of like process that happens mm -hmm. with yourself I mean first is the short-term sort of you know effects and then you have the long-term effects and obviously with miscarriage the short term is the physical side of it mm -hmm. you know trying to deal with that and trying to get your yourself back to feeding normal again or mm -hmm. get, you know getting rid of maybe whatever pain they might be and getting your body back into a healthy sort of state mm -hmm. and then the long-term effects obviously is the psychological effect of how does that you know make me feel now about it how does it make me feel about myself and how do I move forward from this mm -hmm. and that has impact on your relationships and your the people around you and you some kind sometimes can be a bit you know withdrawal you know from you know trying to like open up a little bit and mm -hmm. you sometimes confused even there's yeah, not even a set true. feeling because it true. is quite strange yeah so people just feel like you know they don't want to talk about it but once you talk about it you're taking it out from your heart out from your mind you're taking feedback from people uh, you go through, you hear what people have went through, it's not only you. you know? I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about talking about it, but you have to be careful who you're talking about because that people are very judgmental yeah. and they may not say the things that you need to hear. And it's not about having the sympathy. Most people that come with these issues, especially with life coaching, is because they want to just be heard 
and they just want to be understood. That is the thing. They want to be heard. Yes, and, and they they yeah. need to be understood. So it's not about giving even your view and your point or your advice. We don't really do that. It's about mm -hmm. just drawing out what they feel and having them work it out for themselves as to how they will go through it. Because mm -hmm. even two people going through the same sort of miscarriages will deal with it differently. There's different scenarios, there's different situations, right. and mm -hmm. that can actually make it worse. Because you're thinking, well, why am I not feeling so you know positive or optimistic about certain things in life, and she mm -hmm. is? Because that could bring something else. So you got to look at it from your situation and the only mm -hmm. time you can actually do that is if you should seek like professional advice and help mm -hmm. and people think that miscarriage is common and you don't need that sort of help but actually it does actually work so you as a life coach um, someone comes up to you and yeah. says I had a miscarriage it's my first baby um, I was very excited about it it was hard planning it some people have a hard time to plan a baby yes and once they get it it's just like oh my god uh, what are the steps you would give to them that would calm them down and make them look at it in a different perspective? It's a whole uh, lot of questioning as mm -hmm. to where they want to get to, the mm -hmm. space that they feel right now. It's, it's a whole session, a, a, a series of sessions, to be honest, about figuring out, like, you know, how do they feel, first of all, right here, right now, mm -hmm. you know, having that impact, but then trying to create a new meaning for it, trying to create and build something that will take them to the next level and also to figure out where they want to go to because a lot of people don't understand where do we go to next. And for each one, it differs. Mm -hmm. So it's no it's normally about firstly building that rapport so that it can open up to you and then you know asking them about figuring out who and what they are mm -hmm. and what does it mean for them to be in the situation yes it's you very know hard, yeah. it's very hard um, mm -hmm. for each one it's very separate and but I think it's really really good to have that because they have the space just for them right and they have that you know that awareness that is only about them and that's what they need it needs to be just about them it's not about showing, showing sympathy it's about just having empathy like mm -hmm. trying to put yourself in their shoes but allowing and giving them the space to do that in their own time mm -hmm. and the way in which they want right you know because a lot of influences from our family and friends will be according to what they think mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. you know and they might not be comfortable even saying things you know in that space because they think that oh well you know oh that's just my mom that's my cousin yes. okay you know they're just talking to yeah. me or good. they want it to be where they may want you to make a decision for the rest of the family instead right. of for you right you know so it's it's the one-on-one -on -one is so Much. so it's like it's such a big impact on a yeah. person that just when they really are heard solely and it's about them and they, they they're given that they feel a lot better mm -hmm. and you know we we're a catalyst for whatever transformation they want to make in their lives mm -hmm. but at the same time we're with them through the journey genuinely right. authentically without judgment without biasness we don't even have to know the whole situation it's just taking it from here now you know, with counselors, they want to go back and, you know, they want to sometimes, you know, analyze the past. And people don't really want that. They can be traumatic from that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want to be in the moment and move forward, you know, and, and you then create. to, like, give you advice and help you and listen to you. It's not so much advice. It's more about, like, you figuring it out for yourselves because we all have the answers for ourselves. Even right. with children, they have the answers. You just got to open it up for them right. because they're more right. likely to take it, their own advice, than someone telling them. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to actually say it when they figure it out for themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's basically how life works, is when you be able to do things that you can actually, you know, make changes with the opening that someone can help you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, you know, open up to somebody and then they challenge you with whatever you're thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes something that you can discover. So it's like a journey that you're going through with when you're in a life coaching session. It's quite inspiring, it's quite, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience that only when you sit in a session then you realize what it actually brings to the table. Mm -hmm. So I really like the points that you highlighted and I really think that we should, along with the points you highlighted as a life coach and experienced one, uh, we should also go back and see what Fatima Zahra salam went through, the pain she went through, the experience she went through. It was very harsh, um, especially that her mother wasn't there. You know, a lot of females, they have miscarriage, their mother's there. But she, her mother wasn't there, her father wasn't there. Imam Ali was there as a hu supporting husband. But as you said, that a man, he goes through a lot too. Mm -hmm. And she knew his role was to asbar, be patient. Yes. So she didn't want to press on that and tell him, Ali, this is what happened to me, this is what they did. Because that's just like telling your man, go out and take revenge. Yes. So uh, she, d she didn't have her mm -hmm. mother, she didn't have her father. 
and she had to keep it inside of her. And that is one thing that we should think about. You know, oh, I'm blessed. I have a life coach I can go to and talk to about. I have a mother. I have friends. I have family. Of course. And always, always go back to all those ladies out there who have experienced a miscarriage or are going through one yeah, recently. Like, just go back to Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam and just see what she went through. The pain, the uh, depression, uh, the loss of a baby. Um, so that is something that on a Fatimiyya day, we should always go back and remember Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam and what she went through. I'm your host, Dal Maghzumi, and thank you for watching. See you next time. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.